Well, things have gotten pretty exciting in Destiny 2 this week. We got a brand new mission inside of a mission and a new exotic scout rifle tied into it. If you haven't had a chance to log in yet, don't worry, I got all the details right here on Lace Potato Clips. Welcome back everyone, and if you're new here, I appreciate you taking the time to stop by and show the channel some love. My name is Lost Angel of Havoc, and this is Lay's Potato Clips, where we got a little bit of everything. Now, like I said at the start of the video, we're going to be talking about Destiny 2 today. Specifically, we're going to be talking about the fishing rally quest that Hawthorne has had. Each week, you could pick up this quest and go to the designated location. You'd fish until you get the exotic fish tied to that location, and then go back to the helm and deposit it. Now each time these exotic fish are deposited, you would get a broken blade. The broken blade is the quest item needed to actually activate the secret mission. Now at this point, if you've been doing the quest every week, you should have all three by this time. But if not, I've got all three fish listed on the screen right now, as well as their locations. So go fish to your heart's content, get your exotic fish and deposit them, and then you should have everything you need to get started. Once you've got all three broken blades, what you'll want to do next is start up a deep dive activity. Now look, I know some of you out there are PvP edgelords that can melt bosses in a heartbeat, okay? But for the average player, my recommendation is going in with the team. Just trust me on this one, it's going to make your life so much easier when it comes to this mission. Another really important note, do not activate pressure trials. You really don't need to. It's just, just, just trust me, okay? Stick around to the end of the video if you want some loadout recommendations and insights on what worked for me and my team. But right now, we just wanna get into the mission. Once you started the activity, you can pretty much proceed as normal. There will be three statues throughout the activity that you'll need to look for and deposit your broken blades into. Unfortunately, the footage I have is from my clear run, so at that particular point, I was less concerned with getting footage and more concerned with actually completing the mission. So I have what I have, but there's plenty of videos out there just showing where these statues are. So I definitely recommend checking those out before you start up or during your playthrough, just so you know where to go because you have to deposit these broken blades to actually open the door to get to the secret area. Now. The secret area itself can be accessed from the second encounter room of the deep dive. So once you're in this area, you wanna clear it like you normally would, but instead of collecting the egregore coral at the end, you wanna go off to your right. Now, this is where things shift a bit from your normal deep dive activity. Once you head into this area, you lose all your buffs from Asa, and you also gain a timer once you encounter the first boss. The first boss encounter pretty much teaches you all you need to know about how this entire fiasco is gonna go. First boss is called Cull the Executioner Knight, and to actually do damage to him, like I'm talking about significant damage, like big DPS baby, there's gonna be three minotaurs that spawn in the room with them, and you're gonna need to take out these minotaurs, and then you will get a buff called Deathly Sharp. Deathly Sharp is going to be the mechanic that pretty much carries you throughout this entire thing. The name of the game here is putting out as much damage as you can, as quick as you can, because again, timer. Once you shave off that first portion of Cole's health bar, they will disappear. At that point, you'll progress into the next area. There will be some ads for you to bulldoze your way through. Again, you wanna be moving as quickly and as intentionally as possible. You'll come into a big wide open room, same rinse and repeat formula. There's gonna be minotaurs, take them out, melt coal. Simple, right? Come on, y'all. Ain't nothing simple about a timed secret mission in Destiny. Come on, this ain't happening. After you wipe the floor with coal, thinking everything is just extra sweet. You're gonna come into a big maze-like area with the final boss. And we're not talking about another Taken Knight, Overgrown Minotaur, Centurion. Nah, we got a Tormentor. <laughs> Omen, Blade of the Black Terrace. That's the final boss, a Tormentor. 
Once you're in this arena with Omen, you're going to want to make your way around the outer corners to find the Minotaurs and kill them. Once that's done, you'll get the Deathly Sharp Times 3 buff. Once you get Deathly Sharp Times 3 in this encounter, you're going to have about a minute 15 seconds to get back to the center and start doing DPS on Omen. There will be ads in the center, so you're going to want to take them out so you can dedicate as much DPS to Omen as possible. He is going to chase you. He's going to jump in the air. He is going to be the literal nightmare that Tormentors are. And I say that specifically regarding boss level tormentors because the mission is timed dps is absolutely essential and with omen being a tormentor the only crit point they have on their body is their chest loadout and build recommendations are coming i promise i got you just let me get through the explanation we almost done survivability is also paramount in this encounter because if you die you do lose the deathly sharp buff which will render all damage you do useless at any rate after that minute 15 seconds is done it's basically rinse and repeat until you kill the boss the minotaurs will start to spawn closer to the center as you progress through the encounter if you're fast enough and do enough damage you should be able to take care of this in two to three phases and bing bang boom you got a new exotic scout rifle now I could have probably done with a bit more testing, but I wanted to make this video and just give some general first impressions and potential uses I could find for it. So I decided to run a Lost Sector with it. Now it does come with corkscrew rifling, accurized rounds and fitted stock, all face perks that promote stability and range. All good things for a scout rifle to have, right? But the main attraction for Wicked Implement is its exotic intrinsic perks. The hallmark of a good exotic in Destiny, in my opinion, is something that has a great gameplay loop and feel. And I think Wicked Implement is a sleeper hit for stasis builds. Its main perk is Creeping Attrition, which allows for rapidly landing precision hits to slow targets down. The loop with that is that when something is slowed down enough with stasis, it freezes and then shatters, which creates extra damage. I mean, who's really giving up free damage in Destiny 2 these days? Like, let's be honest, right? But then you also have its secondary exotic perk, Tithing Harvest. While Creeping Attrition is active, Tithing Harvest allows for your precision kills to generate stasis shards that return to you. And then upon collecting a stasis shard, it reloads the magazine. Now, my stasis builds pretty much rely on generating and collecting stasis shards. So needless to say, Wicked Implement got me feeling some type of way. As you can see from the gameplay, the perk is pretty neat, has a lot of utility for things like servitors that have a very well exposed crit spot and also is a bit stationary or slow moving. So you can actually focus on landing those crits. And of course, as it pertains to creeping attrition, you just, you can't beat that free damage from the shatter. Other general notes, overall, how the gun feels when it's being fired, as well as the very generous reload speed, it's nice. I like it. It's not gonna be for everybody, but with all the different options we have in Destiny, I don't think it has to be for everybody. It doesn't necessarily have to be the most optimal thing to be practical for certain builds. And as a lore guy, also, I'd be remiss if I didn't point out the similarities it has to another exotic scout rifle tied to a hive god. That's right, I'm talking about Touch of Malice. I am curious to see if at some point we will get another exotic scout, maybe related to Sabathun at some point, just to complete the trio. But that's just me spin foiling. Now, assuming you've made it this far, I haven't forgotten about you. Here's my loadout recommendations for the mission. My team and I went in all running ARC as a subclass. And then after some trial and error, I actually switched off of Thunderlord and put on Divinity while my teammates continued to run Thunderlords. As you can imagine, Divinity just made everybody's lives so much easier. We got it done. Still struggled a bit because, of course, anytime you add a timer to a mission, there's the anxiety there of just getting it done and completing it, but we made it happen. Also, pro tip, 
during the jumping attack, you're actually going to want to wait till he lands to actually do anything like a super or a rocket if that's what you're using for damage. I don't necessarily recommend rockets just because he moves around a lot, but to each their own. That's all I got for you today. If you found this video informative or helpful in any way, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button. It's a little bit, but it does go a long way in terms of supporting the channel. If you'd like to see more videos like this, by all means, hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss any uploads. Once again, my name is Los Angeles of Havoc. Thank you so much for watching Lay's Potato Clips. We'll see you next time, friends. Same Lay time, same Lay channel.